have a great guest, uh, Monez. Uh, I've tried to pronounce this several times, and I'm sorry. Let me try. Uh, Kakaria. That's fine. Kakaria. Is it correct? Kakaria. Yes. That's close you enough. close. <laughs> so Monez is, is this was her first meeting here at uh, CG. She had a great presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. The camera's over there. I keep looking at the stupid right, sorry. computer. It's my own fault. I'm the one looking down there, too. Um, but uh, Monez is out of Dallas. As you can tell by her accent, she's from Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think of your first meeting? I loved it. It was very interesting. Um, I got to learn a lot. Lots of nice takeaways, nuggets, as I call it. And I'm definitely going to continue and be back for more. So right now, all I'll say is a great group of people. I'm hungry to learn and grow my business and take it to the next level. And uh, some of the things we were talking about is how giving the group is here. Because I was you know, just on with Leon and, and how the community is always here to, to give. And right. now you, you still have to be able to share because when you're, you're in a mastermind, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're, you're in the wrong, the wrong room. And uh, it's one of the things about the culture here at CG is that we're all trying to, to give back as much as possible. Right. And if you run out of good stuff to say, you better go study something. So you'll have <laughs> something better the next time. So let's, let's talk about your business. Um, you got started in a single family mm -hmm. uh, buy and hold. Right. And your original goal was what? Four. <laughs> how four many, houses how many do you have now so i have 71 um <laughs> three out of those are commercial deals actually and they are paying very well nice and i have one multi-family so i'm i'm i feel i'm blessed i think you've exceeded your goal <laughs> <laughs> yes my goal keeps changing every couple of years well, well that's one of the listen that's all part of life uh things change um you can't set the goal. I mean, you can set the goal up here, right. but you can only accomplish it in smaller increments. Correct. And we were just talking about that again with Leon. Uh, it's, you know, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. One bite at that, a time. That's only, the only way you can do it. So um, how many markets are you in now? Right now, I'm in three markets in the U.S., and I still have my original properties back home in India. So Texas, Indiana, and Florida. So I want you to hear this again. She still has homes in India that she owns and is renting out. And if you're afraid to get outside of your market, <laughs> it's not like she can get in the car and go drive and see it. Now, uh, Monez has one flaw in her real estate investing. And that is she gets emotionally attached <laughs> to her property. Yes, I'm working on that. Trust me, I'm working on it. Um, I've come a long way because before, if someone would even come and say, do you want to you sell, sell your property? That would make me so mad that, that I would say, don't ever call me again. And I will sue you if you call me again. So from there to saying, no, I'm not interested right now. Or maybe if you offer me double of market price, I think I've come a long way. And I actually do sell a few now. So yeah. That's good. Well, a good investor is always looking at their portfolio mm -hmm. and seeing how they can adjust that portfolio so they don't have uh, too much dead equity. Uh, I like to say uh, lazy money. Right. Because if you have too much equity in one property, you could take that money and all right, so let, let's, let's say you sell that property. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can now buy two or three and double your cash flow. That's true. Or you can refinance them and do the same thing. Right. Uh, and as we all know, rates are really low and you can get really long terms. So, you know, the issue is when you, when you own as many properties as you do, you're not going to qualify for the Fannie Freddie type I loans. Agree. But rates are still extremely low right now. And if right. you could find... Uh, a commercial banks, and there are some out there that will still do this, that will allow you a 20 year loan, not not one with a balloon mm -hmm. or one with a call option. Uh, so you can keep those for long term at really low rates. And we, we talked about this the other day too, about paying, <clears throat> excuse me, our friend Aaron Chapman, who's been on our show uh, quite a few times, uh, 
uh, talks about this a lot. Being able to pay in today's dollars uh, tomorrow and in, in the future, because we all know that today's dollar is not going to buy as much stuff uh, 10 tomorrow. years from now. Yes, it's right? time value of money. So um, if you guys can hear the thunder in the background, I'm pretty sure it's not going to come here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a normal sound of clear water. <laughs> So is it the wind crashing on the rocks, maybe? Yeah, we can uh, we can hope so. <laughs> um, so, what was I going to ask you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> quit laughing at me, Jonathan. <laughs> if you don't have anything nice to say, keep it to yourself. Bill, no one could have anything to say. You don't take a breath. Uh, Even when you don't remember what you want to say, no one can get a comment in because you're talking about what you forgot. By the way, Monez, meet Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm glad I get to see you. So Yeah, yeah. I know Bill uh, and Wendy were Jonathan, excited to meet you. Jonathan is uh, on this back porch with his little fireplace behind him. It's 68 degrees and raining. <laughs> but he still decided to take it outside. Well, I, I thought, Bill, if you were going to be poolside, I was going to be fireside. Like, we awesome. don't know. <laughs> is the fireplace on? Uh, it it's, is. It's a wood. It's a wood one. So, yeah, I've got oh. some logs in there burning. Awesome. You cool. can't yeah. see because they have his name in front of it. No, oh, there it there is. There you go. There, I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to have to clean it out. <laughs> I'm always thinking ahead. For. That's right. <laughs> They're not old enough yet. Oh, they learn young. Come on now. You got to put them to work. <laughs> All right. So uh, about your uh, cash flow, mm -hmm. what, what is your goal for, for cash flow uh, typically when you're buying a property that is going to have leverage on it? Okay. So my minimum cash flow that I want from the property, I do the Burr method. So I buy it with hard money and then I put whatever I need to put down. And my goal is to try and refinance it in three to six months as quickly as possible. And once I refinance it, my goal is to make minimum $400 per door. I make more than that, but if it makes less than $400, I don't buy it. That's pretty interesting. There's a lot of markets where uh, the goal is $200. I know, but at 200, so I have a system that I've developed where I have red, yellow, and green. So all my green properties are the ones that are making more than $400. So well, I'm good, good. Good reason to have them green. Yeah. Green for go. So I like it. I love those properties. They're there. Then anything between 200 and 400 goes into the yellow zone and anything that's making less than $200 a door goes into the red zone and those are the ones that I have to sell. Yeah, that makes sense. So yep. once they are red, I have to figure out how I can make it yellow if I can by raising yeah. the rents or reducing costs. Sure. And if I cannot, then in six months, I have to sell those properties. That, that's a good system. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, do you have any that are red now? Yes. Well, now's a great time to sell them because the prices are up. Correct. Right. Correct. Uh, what markets are those in? Do you know, There's are one they in just Miami, which is my retirement house. <laughs> <laughs> so I know it's red, yeah. but again, there's an emotional attachment to it. We bought it because we found it really cheap. We don't know when we're going to retire, yeah. but eventually we'll retire. So even when I bought it, I knew it would be in the red and I'm fine with it being in the red because knowing going in, I knew that we would have to pay something out of our pocket. The rent would not cover it because it's a super expensive house. Yeah. So that's fine. And then the second house that's red is what, one that I bought for my daughter to go to college right by SMU, which is in Highland Park, which is one of the most prestigious areas of Dallas. And again, I knew it's going to be red. Yeah. So Excellent. those are my red houses. And next year I'll be selling it because she'll be graduating and then I won't need it anymore. Well, I can say the one in Miami, if, if you look at trends in history, uh, the Miami Fort Lauderdale market does a lot of this. Yeah. So if you can sell it now while everyone's moving from New York. Oh, yes. You can, you can buy it back here fairly. I fairly actually fair. thought yeah. about it because I've been talking to my real estate agent. Uh, last week, we actually had this conversation. Should I just sell it now and buy something else in two years or two years or when I'm actually ready to move? And maybe we'll actually do that. 
that I, I just know from history that's not a bad play. The chances are it's going to go down and then come back up again. All right. You're right about that. Listen, thank you so much for joining me. My it, pleasure. It was, a, it was wonderful meeting you this weekend. I, I, I look forward to having you come back again. Well, I'll say this weekend. We did it at the beginning of the week. It's not the weekend yet. <laughs> it feels like a weekend for us, right? But I, I know you got a flight that you need to catch, and I, I appreciate you taking the time to come up here. Thank you. In this terrible wind. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice to meet uh, you. Jonathan.